I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. Anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. Generations of Americans have reported seeing objects in the sky that they could not explain. QA-517, do you want to report a UFO? Advancements in military technology have taken these unidentified flying objects from the stuff of the silver screen to the halls of Congress. In June, the U.S. intelligence community issued a report on unidentified aerial phenomena, better known to many of us as UFOs. There were so many of these things, there were so many sightings off the East Coast, they were concerned simply about mid-air collisions. They were posting warnings at naval air bases, uh, alerting the pilots to that possibility. That's how commonplace this was. That's how much of this activity was going on. This was a validation that you need in the government to justify resources and action. I was thrilled that there was a report. <laughs> the report was vague and lacked answers about what most of these UAPs are or may be, but the U.S. government is openly acknowledging the existence of these objects and the serious concerns they've created, saying UAPs, quote, pose a challenge to U.S. national security. But how? We're seeing objects that fly with impunity within our restricted airspace. This is a national security issue until we determine origin and intent Filmmaker Jeremy Corbell has been researching UFOs for years. He obtained and released several videos of UAPs in the last year that were filmed by military personnel and verified by the Department of Defense and eyewitness accounts. I have been releasing footage where UFOs are swarming Navy warships, which sometime they move in ways that are far beyond our concepts of material science and our known propulsion. Splashed. Splashed. Mark bearing a range. I don't know who's building it, who's got the technology, who's got the brains, but there's there's something out there that was better than our airplane. The baffling thing about this propulsion is there's no combustion involved. Everything we use and have, whether it's jet or propeller or rocket or missile, involves some kind of explosive fuel that's being mixed with oxygen to create a chemical reaction. That does not appear to be happening at all. There's no air intake, there's no exhaust, and they're able to move at hundred mi hundreds of miles an hour without any obvious source of propulsion. The intelligence report states that many of the UAP sightings, quote, tended to cluster around U.S. training and testing grounds. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. In 2019, we began to get swarms of unidentified objects operating in close proximity to Navy uh, warships off the coast of California. This was also happening at uh, nuclear propulsion plants and an Air Force base. Why would somebody be operating in such close proximity? Well, one theory is they were trying to provoke us and see how our air defense systems work and operate. Have we seen any deliberate hostile acts um, not necessarily, but have we seen the ability to disable some of our nuclear technology? Yes, we have, and so that's problematic. Lou Elizondo worked for the Pentagon in defense intelligence and counterterrorism operations. Some pilots have reported some sort of what appears to be jamming attempt on our, on our radar systems. But we have to ask ourselves, is it really active jamming that is going on, deliberately trying to spoof us? Or are we dealing with the technology by, by the mere fact that this technology exists, this, this advanced technology, we may be receiving some sort of, of, of distortion to our own systems. The Pentagon said in a statement after the report's release that it plans to formalize the study of UFOs going forward. The methodology of the propulsion and the power sources are game changing for any nation that can start to even begin to understand the technology that is observed and represented. If this technology uh, is in the hands of a potential adversary, it could be a dramatic strategic advantage. Imagine China or Russia being able to potentially 
uh, disrupt our nuclear command and control, to decapitate the United States, to render us uh, unable to respond promptly. If that were to happen, we wouldn't escalate. We would be defeated and there would be a new sheriff in town. However, all agree that it's unlikely that a nation state would possess such game-changing technology and keep it to themselves for so long. So the report says it's not America, it's not Russia, it's not China. So who else is there? Of course, the last option, it's neither our technology nor foreign adversarial technology. It's something else or what in the report is referred to as quote unquote other category. And uh, the sky's the limit.